Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Genetics, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my clinical biochemistry playlist. In previous videos, we talked about glycogen storage diseases, lactose intolerance, galactosemia, sorbitol, and cataracts in the eye in patients with diabetes. We talked about cystinuria, cystinosis, homocystinuria, insulinoma, somatostatinoma, gastrinoma, glucagonoma, and even VIPoma. Then we started talking about connective tissue disorders. We talked about Marfan syndrome before, which is a problem in elastin. And today we're talking about Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, which is a problem in collagen, such as type 3 collagen found in blood vessels and type 5 collagen skin problems and joint problems. If the patient can stretch his or her skin like this, if the patient can extend the fingers backwards all the way until they reach and touch the forearm, these are classic signs of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Please watch the videos in this clinical biochemistry playlist in order for maximum understanding and retention. Recall that bones, cartilages, tendons, ligaments, and muscles come from the mesoderm of the three-layered embryo. Mesodermal structures include bones and cartilages, kidneys and ureters, the wall of the blood vessels and lymph vessels, muscles and tendons. Bones have type 1 collagen, but cartilages have type 2 collagen, as we have discussed before on my anatomy playlist. Let's review the different types of collagen. Type 1 is in bones, including teeth, the ossicles of the ear, and even tendons. Type 2, cartilage, cartilage. Type 3 is very flexible, blood vessels. Type 4 is in the floor, basement membrane. Type 5 is in many tissues. Look at this, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome is a defect in collagen synthesis. When I have defective collagen, I will suffer symptoms in my bones, vessels, tendons, ligaments, etc. You know what are other diseases caused by collagen defects? Vitamin C deficiency, called scurvy, and Alport syndrome. You'll find this video in my biochemistry playlist and this video in my nephrology playlist. Ehlers-Danlos syndrome could be inherited in an autosomal dominant fashion or sometimes in an autosomal recessive fashion. If it's autosomal dominant, one parent is affected, the other parent is normal, and then half of the offsprings are affected, the other half is normal. If it's autosomal recessive disease, however, one parent is a carrier, the other parent is also a carrier, and then a quarter of the offsprings will be absolutely normal, genotypically and phenotypically, and then half of the offsprings will be carriers, i.e., phenotypically normal, no symptoms, but genotypically carriers, i.e. they carry the bad gene. And then the remaining quota of the offsprings is the actual one with the disease. So this person is sick genotypically and phenotypically. Some patients with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome have a problem when collagen type 3 which means they have vessel diseases, include dilatation of the aortic root. Anytime I dilate the aortic root right here, the cusps of the poor aortic valve will be far away from one another. They will be unable to touch, which means the valve will be unable to close when it should be closed, which will give me regurgitation of blood from the aorta back to the left ventricle with a classic aortic regurgitation murmur. This is called aortic valve insufficiency i.e. insufficient closing. Moreover, some of these patients will suffer from aortic dissection, aortic aneurysms, not just aortic aneurysms, which could be in the thoracic aorta or more commonly in the abdominal aorta. They can also have aneurysms in the brain, such as the infamous berry or saccular aneurysms. My vessels are weak, my vessels are weak. Oh my goodness, I will bruise, ecchymoses. My vessels are weak, dissection in the internal carotid artery, which is a freaking emergency, and in the thoracic artery, another emergency. You can learn about these topics by downloading my surgery high yields course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. Type 3 collagen is defective, very thin skin, sometimes atrophic, translucent, revealing the veins underneath, and organ rupture, including rupture of the bowel or rupture of the gravid uterus. Gravid means pregnant, as in hyperemesis gravidarum, 
or the misnomer myasthenia gravis. The defect could be in collagen type 5 and these patients with Ehlers-Danlos will suffer from skin symptoms and joint problems. Skin problems include hyperextensibility, the skin is very stretchy, joint hypermobility or joint dislocation. So, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome has gazillion subtypes. Here I'll mention three. The most common one is called the hypermobility type. Other common ones include the classical type, problem in type 5 collagen, and the vascular type. The problem is in type 3 collagen because type 3 is in vessels. Patients with the classical type have a defect in collagen type 5. That's the name of the protein of the extracellular matrix. If that's the name of the protein, what would you call the gene? Collagen type 5. Oh, is that what it means? Absolutely. And then A1 is for the alpha 1 chain of the protein. Skin problems, joint problems. The skin is hyperextensible like this. Thin, dewy, atrophic, velvety. It is so thin to the point of being transparent, revealing the veins underneath, visible veins. Joint hypermobility like this. I can make my fingertips touch my forearm. Hyperextension, hypermobility. Next, vascular type of Ehlers-Danlos, problem in type 3 collagen. What would you call the gene? Collagen type 3. A1 is still the alpha-1 chain. Weak vessels, thin skin, spontaneous organ rupture, and varicose veins. Ehlers-Danlos syndrome has gazillion clinical subtypes. Don't forget, those who have the Col5A1 defect have a problem in type 5 collagen. It's called classical type of Ehlers-Danlos, and they suffer from skin problems, joint problems. Those who have the Col3A1 mutation have problem in collagen type 3, and that's the vascular type. So they will have vessel diseases, ecchymoses, etc. The mode of inheritance is autosomal dominant or recessive with various severities. Some people have mild symptoms, others have moderate symptoms, others have severe symptoms. Let's review the symptoms again. Skin problem, joint problems, sometimes called the double jointed finger. Because of all of this, I can flex or I can extend a lot. Weak vessels, aneurysms in the abdominal aorta, thoracic aorta, or in my brain called berry or secular aneurysms. Don't forget that when these berry aneurysms rupture in my brain, they give me subarachnoid hemorrhage, the worst headache of my life, thunderbolt headache. And of course, subarachnoid hemorrhage is a subtype of intracranial bleeding. Bleeding inside my skull. Not good. Bruising or ecchymosis. Remember in my videos on purpura, petechia, and ecchymosis, we talked about that in order for me to have ecchymosis, it could be a platelet problem or a vessel wall problem. These patients have a vessel wall problems. But if I have immune thrombocytopenic purpura or thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, etc., I have bruising due to platelet problems. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Other vessel issues include dissections of the internal carotid, the thoracic aorta or the abdominal aorta. Aortic root dilatation will lead to aortic regurgitation, which will lead to a murmur. Mitral valve prolapse can lead to mitral regurgitation, also a murmur. Don't forget to add a click before the murmur. The murmur of aortic regurgitation is diastolic decrescendo murmur, best heard at the third left intercostal space at the sternal border. However, the mitral valve prolapse murmur is a systolic murmur, best heard at the apex, which means left fifth intercostal space mid clavicular line. What else? Thin skin, organ rupture, gravid uterus can rupture, intestines can rupture, and the uterus can also have a prolapse. It's a connective tissue disorder. One of the functions of the normal connective tissue is to keep your organs in place, keep your viscera in check. Moreover, poor wound healing, collagen defect, diverticular diseases, connective tissue defect, especially in the sigmoid colon, varicose veins, visible veins under the skin, scoliosis, pectus excavatum, lots of hernias, including inguinal hernias, high arched palate, and much more. Some of these patients have a problem in collagen type 1, and they can develop secondary osteoporosis. What's the most common cause of death in Ehlers-Danlos syndrome? The nasty aortic dissection. How can we diagnose this disease? History, physical exam, 
genetic testing. By the way, one of the subtypes of Ehlers-Danlos does not have any genetic tests available, so you have to rely on your clinical sense, which means you need to be a good doctor, not another doofus with a stethoscope. Echo can help you because of the cardiac and vascular issues. Management, conservative treatment, preventative treatment, avoid contact sports because of all of the cardiac risk factors. The same thing applies for Marfan syndrome if you remember. Some of these patients have hypertension. Oh, hypertension with all of these risks like dissection, aortic regurgitation, etc. They might benefit from beta blockers. Retinal or scleral fragility is common, which means an annual ophthalmological exam is recommended. Some medicosis pearls for the pros. What are the genetic or heritable diseases that can cause aortic dissection? Marfan is one. Ehlers-Danlos, the vascular type, is another one. Turner is a third one. Lois Dietz syndrome is a fourth one. And familial thoracic aortic aneurysm syndromes is a fifth possibility. In the next video, we have a mnemonic for Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. You will find it in this clinical biochemistry playlist and in my mnemonics playlist. If you're taking a board exam, especially USMLE step two or three, you need to understand and know about carotid artery dissection, which is a freaking emergency. One of the risk factors include Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. You can learn about carotid artery dissection by downloading my surgery high yields course, which will also teach you about limb claudication, acute limb ischemia, compartment syndrome, and the classic Volkmann's contracture, which is a complication of compartment syndrome. There is a compartment syndrome for the extremities, a compartment syndrome for the abdomen, a compartment syndrome for the orbit, and much more. Learn about them by downloading my surgery high yields course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. To learn about acute respiratory distress syndrome, ARDS, drowning, many toxidromes, angina, myocardial infarction, ischemic stroke, hemorrhagic stroke, subarachnoid hemorrhage, like the one that you can see in Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, download my emergency medicine high yields course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. If you do not want to download my courses but would rather watch them right here on YouTube, click the join button and choose the highest tier to gain instant access to more than 300 premium videos right now. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel here or here, go to my website to download my courses, notes and cases. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus where medicine makes perfect sense.